Good morning all, PWM5 solar charge controller again and I've just programmed it with the PIT kit 2 so that it's got the charge controller code in it so that's done, now I can hook it up to my lead acid battery and start checking whether this thing modulates at the appropriate voltage which is 13.5 volts so let's, um, I'll switch that off actually and then pull that out so let me hook up my male CCTV connector on directly onto the battery. Um, <laughs> if I can see what I'm doing. Got a fuse here just in case. And then if I put that there and plug the charge controller into it, we should get two seconds of light on. Now we should get the voltage of the battery. Let's see if that works. One, two, about four. So 12.4 volts, that battery. Hmm, let's check that. I'll use this uh, LED voltmeter display, which is what I always used to use when I was manufacturing these and checking them. A uh, slippery black connector. So yeah, bang on, 12.408765, whatever that says. Good. I'll just disconnect the charge controller from the 12 volts for a moment while I plug in this other connector. So once again, it's a case of forcing these uh, very sharp pins into these two wires. So positive to the yellow. I try and center it so it goes up the middle of the multi set of strands. Yeah, that one's quite tight, not sure why. And the black one, in you go. Okay. Cable tie on there just to hold it in this form. Right, let's plug this back into here. That light comes on. It now shows voltage, and now what I need to do is plug a solar panel into there. Well, it's not going to be a solar panel. It's going to be a power supply. And the power supply I'm going to use is this one. Now, it's heavy, so it's transformer-based. It says that the output is 12 volts, but actually when you plug it in, it's more like 16 or 17, because it's not regulated. It's just a transformer, bridge rectifier, and smoothing capacitor. In here and this behaves a little bit more like a solar panel than a switch mode power supply would. A switch mode power supply wants its output to be 12 volts and it doesn't like that being pulled down. It will try hard to maintain that up. This won't bother. This um, is designed actually to be higher than its uh, rated specified secondary and then when you put a load on it it will pull down to around the 12 volts. So this will sit at about um, a solar panel voltage. Now, of course, when the charge controller is on, this voltage will pull down to that of the battery. The battery will lift up ever so slightly, but this is the one that will yield the most. So let's plug that into the uh, charge controller's solar input, and we should see the battery charging up. That power supply is charging the battery up. We'll get a voltage indication on the LED so one two three and one so 13.1 it's a little bit out um there is software in here which tries to take a measurement when the pwm actually i think it creates a little window in pwm you want to remember that when this is below the modulation voltage the float voltage of 13.5 this thing is permanently on that mosfet is on this is like a piece of wire it's not modulating, it's, a, it's at 100% PWM. So, of course, there will be a voltage drop in the cables. And what this does is it creates a little window every five seconds, a tiny little window in the charge and tries to take a measurement then. I'm not sure how successful it is, but what are we getting now on the indicator? We're getting one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So yeah, it's reading a little bit high. And as a result, it might modulate a little bit low. And this could be um, due to the error in the voltage regulator. But we'll see when this starts to modulate, when this gets up to 
around 13.5. Like I said, I think it might modulate a bit low, so it might modulate at 13.4, but we shall see. I'll just run the camera again, because it's going to be quite close to modulating, I think. Let's see what this is saying. Oh, I missed that, because I was looking at the camera, and the camera missed it. Oh, I think it's just glitching and jittering. So it's right on that threshold between indicating voltage with the flashes and indicating modulation with a sort of um, constant PWM simulation. It's a simulated PWM. It pulse width modulates at about 20 hertz so that you can see it, whereas the actual pulse width modulation um, on the MOSFET is 122 hertz. But that is now modulating. And I seem to remember it was always a little bit all over the place when you use this pass by because of course there's some mains ripple on here. But that's modulating at about 13.45. So if I leave that now for this battery to absorb more charge and the point about this um, unit at the moment is that the PWM is probably just under 100. It's probably 90 something percent because this is still absorbing charge, even though it's at the modulation voltage. It's still drawing in a fair bit of current to hold it there. As this absorbs more charge, holding it at 13.47 or 13.5 volts gets easier and requires less current. And then the PWM percentage drops away in order to hold this at 13.5. That's now modulating. The camera is doing funny things with it, but to the naked eye, that's a nice steady modulation but it's a very flickery modulation and that indicates that it's uh, at a high percentage. When this gets to a very bright constant modulation, then the PWM is at a lower percentage. So I tried to show on the LED roughly where the PWM is. Um, but according to this meter, it's currently modulating at a very nice 13.5, almost exactly. Um, that might creep up a little bit more as the battery absorbs more charge, I don't know. It seemed to start modulating a bit under 13.5, so it might uh, settle down at a proper float a little bit above. Yes, it's crept up a bit, hasn't it? 13.51 now. Now I've got my Velman scope out. This is a scope I used to use outdoors because it's battery powered. And you can see it outside in sunlight because it's uh, monochrome LCD. And I'm looking at, if I don't short all this out, uh, the incoming power supply. Now, of course, that's going to be switching between the power supply open circuit when the MOSFET turns off and the power supply when it's pulled down to the voltage of the battery. So that means I have to be on AC coupling because it's jumping between 13 and a half and about 16 volts. So I can't see it on DC coupling. There's a huge amount of ripple on here as well from that. Uh, mains power supply, but I think you can probably just about see the pulse width uh, switching, which are the smaller um, oscillations. You can also see the mains. You can see there's a sort of sine wave on here. This is 20 milliseconds per division, but it's very hard to see what the um, pulse width mark space ratio is. It looks like it's around 50%. If I um, take this out so it's wider yeah I think the AC coupling is is reshaping the pulse width switching because those should be square peaks and they're all distorted so it's very hard to see what the percentage is yeah difficult this is definitely the 122 Hertz because I put a couple of markers on here roughly the width of one of these pulses that I'm looking at well, the width of a cycle on these cycles, that's uh, showing as 8 milliseconds between these markers, which in terms of frequency is 125 hertz. So the 122 hertz is definitely this. But of course, we've got this mains uh, frequency superimposed on it, which makes it a bit tricky. So I've now dug out a 5 watt solar panel. So I'm just going to... Disconnect the mains power supply. Connect in the 5 watt solar panel, which just happens to have conveniently the same connector. But I don't know whether I'm going to have enough sun 
to actually see this no and that's falling isn't it so it's just not enough sun on the panel to do that test unfortunately uh, see if I can rig this up so that the sun is on that panel so I've brought this outside into my covered area um, the solar panel is up there tilted up towards the sun so this is modulating I think you can see that on the LED just about voltage is hard to see but 13.49 and now the scope gives a much better uh, indication there for 8.5 milliseconds on the two markers for the now the high is the um, solar panel when it's disconnected from the battery and the low is when it's connected so it's connected most of the time so this is at about probably 80 percent pulse width modulation because that panel's not a very strong panel and this battery is clearly not very uh, well charged in terms of saturation of charge as time goes on and that battery pulls in more charge and becomes more saturated with charge that PWM percentage will fall uh, we're looking at the low part as the on time and it will become close to 50% probably I might leave that for a bit actually and come back when that's changed a bit so that's actually reduced now uh, no I mean it's the on time has increased so it's having to put more energy from the panel into the battery and I've got a feeling that might be because that panel has now been in the sun uh, for a while and it's starting to get really quite hot and of course solar panels produce less voltage when they get hotter so that might explain why that has actually the peaks there have gone thinner those are the off times and the on times have actually become longer interesting stuff Right, I've now put two of those 5 watt solar panels uh, into this little splitter cable, or joiner cable, and now we're getting a much squarer square wave, and crawling up my arm. Uh, so it's on for much less of the time, because I've got probably getting on for 10 watts coming in, and the battery of course is at the same sort of voltage, 13.4 seven the modulation led is flickering away you can't really see that on here but yeah certainly by putting more uh, solar power in the pwm controller has wound the pulse width further down in order to maintain that 13 and a half volts good stuff so that's all looking rather good now the next thing i need to do is to put the transient suppression diode across the tab of that MOSFET take out that little programming header and then start to weatherproof this thing by using the UV glue conformal coating but uh, I think for today the rest of today I'm just going to sit here and watch this thing modulate and watch that battery charge so cheerio